Hi there and welcome to my channel. In this video, I share the fantastic trip my husband and I had in Australia for three weeks. We got to visit some family and friends, walk the streets of Perth and Sydney, travel down the east coast and go inland to the capital of Canberra. That's all covered in this video. We also took the Indian Pacific train trip right across the continent of Australia from Perth to Sydney and travelled for a week throughout Tasmania. So make sure to go watch those videos once I've uploaded them. So let's get into it. We started our trip by checking in at Oatambo International Airport and headed straight to the lounge. Here we met up with some friends who happened to be flying out on the same day off on their own adventures. As we stepped onto Qantas Boeing 787, I was delighted to see their business class offering. Like most business class, you get your little toiletry bag, which includes things like a toothbrush, comb, socks and a razor. That first glass of bubbly always goes down well. Cheers. On this flight, we were still required to wear face masks but staff didn't enforce the rule as strictly as other airlines. For dinner, I ordered the prawn salad as a starter and the chicken breasts for mains. Service was very slow on this flight and by the time mains came I was so hungry that I forgot to take some footage of it. Both dishes were delicious though but honestly Qantas improve your service. Just like it's not bad. Not quite economy class. Let's see how this trip goes. All smooth sailing actually, which is really good. So we've just arrived at our hotel here in Coogee. Let's see what our room looks like. This is the Crown Plaza. <laughs> Quite nice. The Crown Plaza, Coogee Beach, close to Sydney. Just landed. No, it's bloody all overcast. What do you mean hot and humid? After checking into our hotel, we decided to explore the area and take a walk on the beach, which was only a block away from our hotel. Coogee Beach is family friendly, has a calm surf and is generally less crowded than Bondi Beach. It's a swimmer's paradise, blessed with natural and man-made rock pools, as well as the beach itself. Nearby, you'll find the bustling Kuji Bay Road, with an assortment of great restaurants, cafes and ice cream shops. There is a spectacular viewing spot on the northern side of the bay which leads to Dolphin Point. Here lies a memorial to 20 of the Australian victims of the 2002 Bali bombings, where six members of the Coogee Dolphins rugby league team were tragically caught in the blast and killed. Below it is Giles Bath, a natural rock pool popular with tourists and children due to its shallow nature.
from the northern headlands you can do the famous Kuji to Bondi coastal walk. It's a 6 km walk and takes roughly 2 hours to complete. It's popular amongst joggers and anyone who loves to get some fresh air. You'll walk past areas like Gordon's Bay, a wonderful snorkeling and diving spot where you'll find an underwater nature trail. It's a hidden oasis only accessible to pedestrians and easily one of the prettiest bays in Sydney. From there, the path leads on to Cloverly Bay, which is where we decided to head back to the hotel. First dinner in Sydney. Having our fish and chips here on the sidewalk. <laughs> we ended our night with a drink and enjoying the views. Next morning we headed to the airport and took a flight to Melbourne. such a vibrant city with lots to offer and things to do, but we came specifically to visit some friends and family. We stayed at the Ibis Hotel, which is close to the family we were visiting, and after checking in, we went off to Century City to kill some time with the Carnival Mirrors. Afterwards, we visited Anne and Jeff, friends we met in 2019 while on a 26-day bus tour travelling through Europe. They treated us to a lovely fish and chips dinner before dropping us off at our hotel. The next day was spent catching up with Ralph's brother and his family at their house. The following day, they spoiled us with a trip to McClellan Sculpture Park. It displays more than a hundred large-scale works by prominent Australian sculptors. The park combines the natural beauty of its surroundings with the impressive, larger-than-life sculptures. A lovely place for art lovers and outdoorsy people alike, where you can spend the whole day wandering around, admiring the beautiful pieces, or have a lazy picnic on the lawns. Truly a spot for the whole family to enjoy.
Peki Aborigine? After a wonderful day at the sculpture park, we had lunch at some old friends who also immigrated to Australia from South Africa. We ended the day at Ralph's brother's house with the rest of our Australian family. Having spent a great couple of days together, it was time to say our farewells. We took the family out for lunch as a final get together before making our way to Spirit Station Pier. Okay, so from here we took the Spirit of Tasmania ferry across the Bass Strait to Devonport, where we spent a week travelling to various places all across Tasmania. I didn't include that in this video, otherwise this already long video would have become extra long and unbearable to watch. So after a week of traveling through Tasmania, we ended up in Launceston, where we took a flight to Perth, where this video continues. Let's go at the regional lounge at Launceston Airport. A little light on snacks, but something better than nothing. We had a fantastic time traveling around beautiful Tasmania, but it was time to go on to Perth for our next adventure. From Launceston, our first flight back was to Melbourne with a short layover where we of course enjoyed the lounge. From Melbourne, we flew on to Perth where a bit of an inconvenience occurred. When we got to Perth, luggage didn't make it, so we're now without luggage. So our luggage didn't make it with us to Perth, but we didn't think much of it. We had a full day in Perth where we were sure our luggage would be loaded onto the next flight and be delivered to us before we have to get onto the train trip that we had the next day. So with this in mind, we didn't bother to go look for any new clothes and instead chose to spend the day sightseeing and enjoying Perth. And why not? Look what a great day it was. This is the hotel we're staying in in Perth. It's got this kind of heritage old restaurant. Check out the room on the top floor there. This is in Perth. Walking a bit of the city and trying to find some breakfast. <laughs> We love walking an area because you see and experience so much more than you would driving. We stumbled on these beautiful murals which was done by world-renowned Australian artist Matt Adnet and it is part of the Adnet Hotel's exterior facade. A visit to Perth's chocolate shop is a must for all chocolate lovers where you'll find the lights with all sorts of shapes and sizes. My nephew loves watching Bluey and since it's an Australian kids program we had to buy him a plush Bluey in Australia. Johan is at Bluey for Raiden.
Murray Street is a busy hub in Perth and on this particular day there were some protests going on regarding the war in Ukraine. This little gem of an alleyway is called London Court with its old style charm and leads you to Elizabeth Quay, the vibey waterfront area where we took a ferry across to Mandira Park. It's a relatively short walk from there to get to the zoo, where we spent the whole afternoon looking at some of the animals they have on display. This is a modern looking zoo, where the enclosures look more natural and open rather than a cage. The animals are kept in big enclosures that closely resemble their natural habitat which keeps them happier and healthier. So my second time in Australia and I finally get to see some kangaroo. They look like very lazy animals. Yep, I finally got to see some kangaroo. On my first trip, I really wanted to see some because that anakuwala is what Australian animals is all about, but I wasn't so lucky. This time, we made sure to see some even though it's in a zoo. Almost looks like a Pokemon. <laughs> Monkeys sure seem to be enjoying themselves. After a long day of walking, we made our way back to catch the ferry and then a bus back to the hotel. Complimentary buses in Perth. 
Perth City Centre offers five free-to-use bus services, which makes getting around the CBD so much easier. Okay, so here our story takes a break. After spending a lovely day in Perth, we thought that our delayed luggage would have been delivered to the hotel and waiting for us. Unfortunately, Qantas lost our luggage, which meant that we had to go without clothes and without any of the chronic medication for the foreseeable future. And we still had a long trip to go, travelling through Australia. So our lost luggage was a bit of a problem for us, because the next day, very early, we got chauffeured to the train station so that we can climb on board the luxurious Grand Indian Pacific train and travel across the continent for the next four days. The train travels 4,350 kilometers between Perth and Sydney and only stops in two little ghost towns where there's no chance to buy any clothes. Had we known this, we would have spent our day in Perth buying new clothes and underwear instead of going to the zoo and doing a bit of sightseeing. Of course, I made a video of our fabulous train trip, so if you'd like to see how we've managed to go four days with only the clothes on our backs, make sure to go watch that video which is uploaded to my YouTube channel. Our train journey ended in Sydney, which is where this video continues, so please enjoy. Arriving in Sydney after our four day train journey, the first order of business was to go buy some new clothes as we didn't know when we'll be reunited with our lost luggage. We just had to go shopping for all of our new clothes, new luggage. So we are walking around Sydney, dragging our newly bought clothes and luggage around since Pointer still hasn't returned our Thanks to us, hasn't even informed us. So yeah, this is what we look. We really tried throughout our train journey to get a hold of Qantas so that we can find out where our lost luggage is, but with no success. Seeing that we had to pick up a car rental at Sydney Airport the next day, we decided to go to the Qantas luggage counter just to go speak to an actual human person and find out where our luggage is. If they locate it, they can send it back to us to South Africa because we had no hopes of actually finding our luggage again. But a quick look on their system revealed that our luggage was actually at Sydney Airport. This is a bit strange considering that we weren't supposed to fly to Sydney and to Perth, the other side of the country. So somehow our luggage ended up in Sydney. We don't know how. But thank goodness they managed to find it on their system and within a few minutes or so, lo and behold. Us reunited with our luggage six days later. Thank you very much. Thanks, hey? <laughs> On our way to Wulongong. Here in, from, our, from Sydney. So we're driving a little bit along the coast here. Finally, we could continue our Australian adventure by driving along the coast down south to Wulongong. There were some beautiful viewpoints along the way. Off point lighthouse, Wulong Gong heads. Wulong Gong is about a half an hour's drive from Sydney and the perfect place for us to stretch our legs and grab something to eat.
from there, it was another two and a half hour drive to get to Batemans Bay where we spent the night. Not a bad view in Batemans Bay. Looks like the social area. This is uh, Batemans Bay, lovely little marina place that we're staying at. It looks fantastic, pretty. There's our place. It's very pretty. Sunset was pretty on this pier, which is a popular fishing spot. Before leaving the coast side and driving inland, we decided to stop along a few beaches just to see what they were like. Malula Bay is our next stop on our beach hopping excursions. Before we turn inland towards Canberra, it's rather tempting. We finally made it to the Australian capital, and of course, the first thing to do is to head to Parliament. So we're at the Australian Parliament there in the background. Pretty impressive building. The mosaic is based on a design by Walpiri artist Michael Nelson Yagamara called Possum and Wallaby Dreaming. The forecourt, which is the main entrance to Parliament House, is framed by two walls that appear to be outstretched as if in a gesture of welcome. You'll find some of Australia's finest historical treasures symbolic architecture and contemporary art on display throughout the building. The Senate and House are the largest rooms in the building. Members of Parliament meet in these rooms to debate bills and represent the people from their territory. Laws can only be passed if both the Senate and the House agree. Okay, the magic happens. The building is designed to blend with the environment. One million cubic meters of earth and rock were removed so the central zone of Parliament House could be built into Capitol Hill. It was placed within the two curved walls and covered with, over with grass to recreate the shape of the hill. 
From here, you can also see and go to the old Parliament House. Our next stop was the National Gallery, which is one of the largest museums in Australia. It houses more than 166,000 works of art. Entrance is free when you book a ticket in advance online. There were some truly remarkable works on display and you almost need a full day to fully explore and appreciate it. robot painter. Outside there's a sculpture garden which includes works by Bert Flugelman and Henry Moore to name a few. Continuing on our walkabout we came across this lively little area. We had a bite to eat and enjoyed some of the entertainment. Roaming the streets in Canberra a bit of Chinese. Strolling through the streets at night, we saw Canberra come to life with most of the trees colorfully lit up and people out and about creating such a lively atmosphere. definitely a must do when you are in Canberra. Tickets are free, just make sure to book your tickets in advance otherwise you might not get in on the day you want to. 
the War Memorial brings together a world-class museum, shrine and research center. It tells the story of men and women who have served and continue to serve Australia in war, conflict and operations. Through exhibitions, artworks and personal records, you get to experience a side of what military service was and is like in Australia. On either side of the memorial pool, you'll find the Roll of Honour, a series of bronze plaques naming the 103,010 Australian servicemen and women who died in conflict or peacekeeping operations. This leads up to the impressive domed chapel called the Hall of Memory, where inside lies the tomb of the unknown soldier. From there we headed to Mount Ainsley Lookout where you get spectacular views of the city. next tourist attraction was a stop at the National Museum of Australia. The museum profiles 50,000 years of indigenous heritage, settlements since 1788 and key events including Federation and the Sydney 2000 Olympics. The museum holds the world's largest collection of Aboriginal bark paintings and stone tools. Entrance is free, but there are some exhibits you have to pay for. To complete our visit of Canberra, our last stop was at the Royal Australian Mint. A fun outing where you get to see how all of Australia's coins are produced. There's a gallery showcasing some of the most earliest coins in circulation and also has some actual Olympic medals on display. Inside the Royal Australian Mint, they make all the coins for the country. As we made our way onto Goulburn, we stretched our legs alongside the massive Lake George. Giant Merino. The big Merino can be found just outside of Goulburn. A fun and worthwhile stop, even if it's just to touch its balls. We're now inside the big Merino sheep that you saw outside. The one with the big balls. Mm. Oh, 
spot in Goulburn on the way to Sydney. Sort of a heritage motel, heritage inn. How does it taste? No, it's tasty, lots of nuts, good seafood, very tasty. I must have mine's delicious. So this is where we stayed last night. Very nice little motel in Goulburn on our way to Sydney. Been fun. Our trip was rapidly coming to an end, but not before one last stop in Sydney. We spent our last day in Australia doing all the touristy things you do while in Sydney. We walked the length of Bondi Beach and its promenade. Even saw this cool robot dog. We took in the stunning view of Harbour Bridge and Sydney Opera House. ended with a quick walk through Luna Park. And so, we headed back to the airport to catch our flight back to South Africa. This time we had the middle seats next to each other and better service from Qantas than we had going to Australia.
that or a holiday trip of Australia. I know it was a long video and well done on making it to the end. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we did experiencing it. Our time in Australia was not limited to what you just saw. We also had an amazing train journey and travel through Tasmania. Make sure to go watch those videos on my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Well, that's the end of our time together. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it and who knows, maybe we'll see you on our next adventure. Cheers.